I have one at the moment. I have Stephen Dorrell with me. Stephen Dorrell, of course, who's uh, switched across to Ken Clark. Now, Ken Clark has not come out with a decisive margin against all the other candidates, has he? Well, he's come out with a very, very good score compared with any of the predictions, even a few days ago. At the weekend, it was said that he'd be doing well to get in the 40 to 50 range. He actually gets 49 votes, which is at the very top of the range of expectations predicted only a few days ago. But there is Mr. Haig with 41 votes. Now, who is going to pick up those right-wing votes which are sloshing around? Well, I think that the key thing the Conservative Party has to do is to listen to its supporters in the country. The truth is that we lost contact with our supporters in the country during the last Parliament. Our supporters are now speaking very clearly. We published the results this morning of the poll of constituency associations. That showed Ken Clark ahead of his nearest rival in the Conservative associations around the country by a margin of two to one. And that's clearly an argument that we shall be using to, put, to seek to extend Kenneth's vote on this very encouraging start. Now, while you've been speaking, we're joined now by John Redwood. John Redwood, you have come third. What is your decision about the next ballot? Well, I'm delighted. Uh, I and my team are going through to the next ballot, and I'm appealing to the other two candidates in fourth and fifth place to join with me a common program for victory. Winning ways for the Conservative Party, winning ways for us. Are you now prepared to predict, as it were, jumping over the others and an outright victory on the second ballot? Well, of course, that's what I'm aiming to do. I, I want to get as much support as I can, but I'm not in the forecasting business. I'm in the winning votes business. What do you say to the supporters of Mr. Howard and Mr. Lilly, even if they stay in the race, but perhaps one of them may drop out? What do you say to them to bring them across to your side? Because some of them do not like the very, very hard line that you take. I'm not taking a hard line. I'm saying spend more on the schools and the hospitals. I'm You're saying also don't saying absolutely close no the... way to a single currency in any way, shape, or form. Yes, I'm saying never to the single currency, just as we've said never to the social chapter. And it will be a much happier party once we've made up our mind on this corrosive issue. There is no way a single currency is going to work in our interests or in the interests of the wider Europe. So let's get on with saying no and opposing Blair. Let us switch back, if we may, just to Stephen Dora for a last word. You've heard Mr. Redwood's prediction. What do you make of it against that sort of talk of how the right will operate? Why can Ken Clark still win through? Well, with great respect, John didn't offer a prediction. He specifically said he wasn't in the prediction mm. business. He will be seeking to extend his vote. That's what you would expect a candidate to do. I shall be seeking to extend Kenneth Clark's vote, as indeed will Kenneth Clark. We have the advantage that we start from a very sub more, uh, much more substantial base than John. And we also have the great advantage that we have the uh, very large-scale support in constituency associations and among conservative supporters in the country. Ask conservative supporters who they want. They come back with a resounding voice for Kenneth Clark. Thank you very much, both. Now we return to the studio. Thank you, Michael. And we'll ignore the somewhat uh, irrelevant placards behind Michael Bronson there.